So if you're like me and have a lot of Mustang friends and follow a lot of Mustang pages on social media, no doubt you've been blown up with information about the Dark Horse Mustang. Now we all know the Dark Horse, it's gonna be the highest performance of the new Mustangs coming in 2024. It's still gonna have the S550 chassis, but it's gonna be an S650 with an entirely new body, entirely new interior, and the Gen 4 Coyote engine. What do we found out recently about the Dark Horse? Well, we know it's going to take just about $58,000 to get behind the wheel of a base model. If you load it up with options, you're approaching 80 grand. Now, what are the options going to be? Same idea as the Mach 1. You'll have an appearance package, a premium package, a handling package, 10-speed automatic, Recaro seats, and something a little different, carbon fiber wheels that were just released at the Chicago Auto Show. Now the carbon fiber wheels are gonna add about $8,500 to the price of a dark horse. I don't expect to see a lot of them out there, but if you're going that direction, they're probably gonna be pretty rare too. And also instead of the Sport Cup 2's for the handling package, we're gonna get the Trofeo R from Pirelli, which should be interesting. Same style tire though, designed for track use and occasional street use. Other options for the dark horse is gonna be stripes. Now Ford has shown a couple different stripe options. The car that we saw at the auto show had stripes on the hood and stripes on the roof. And it appears these stripes are available either painted or vinyl. Now again, Ford hasn't locked down all the details on the stripes yet, but painted stripes might push the dark horse over 80 grand. Now if there's two things that have been polarizing to Mustang enthusiasts about the dark horse, it's gonna be the price and the interior. Now the price, it's expensive. I mean, dark horses are gonna be expensive, but it's along the lines of the other high-performance Ford cars they've offered in the past. You know, it's cheaper than a GT500. It's about the same as the Mach 1 and the GT350 and stuff like that. So it is expensive, but it's in that price range of those other cars. Now, the interior is probably the most polarizing thing I have heard. Now, the new interior we saw in the dark horse, I personally thought was beautiful. Lots of really cool touches. I mean, you had blue stitching, you had blue on the Recaro seats. The new manual shift knob they showed I think is absolutely gorgeous. There's even touches of blue coming through the holes in the seats. The cluster, again, a lot of people don't like it. They think it's a video game. I think it looks great. Uh, you sit in the car, it's not distracting at all. It gives you all kinds of information right at your fingertip. You can easily shut it down, you can dim it. There's a ton of options there. When you guys really get to see what this cluster can do, I think your opinion might change. You know, I'm still a fan of those analog gauges and I get where you guys are coming from but modern car buyers seem to want these screens and that's the direction Ford's heading. So the biggest question, does the S650 Dark Horse live up to the legacy of the other high performance Mustangs that have come before? Well, funny thing, we did a video about two years ago. And in that video, we talked about what we would like to see from the new Mustang. At the time, it was gonna be a 2023, obviously it turned into being a 2024. We talked about what we wanted to see. And the one thing I was hoping for was a lighter, more nimble performance car. Well, we're staying with the S550 chassis, so that's not gonna happen. Another thing I wouldn't mind seeing was all-wheel drive. I was hoping maybe there'd be an all-wheel drive variant of the Mustang. Again, staying with that S550 chassis and not going to the CD6 platform, all-wheel drive is probably off the table as well. Other things I talked about were a hybrid V8 option, which again, you could have an all-wheel drive, hybrid run the front wheels, V8 rear wheel, make a true supercar Mustang. Could that happen? Possibly, but I don't think it's gonna happen anytime soon. I'd also hope for maybe a Boss 302 variant. I've always been a fan of the Boss 302s. I love the 12s and 13s. I was hoping that maybe we would see that again, and that can still be a possibility, because I feel the Dark Horse kind of fills that Boss mold. It's a track car, capable of the track, but still a great street car, which is what the modern Boss 302s did. And the last thing I mentioned in that video was ditch the A10 transmission. Now, I know a lot of people are gonna hate me for this, and that's fine. I know the A10 is great at the drag strip, has all kinds of things it can do well, for me, I don't like it on the street. I think it hunts for gears. I just don't think it's a great street transmission. To me, the Dark Horse, especially at this price point, it has the Tremec manual. It should have the Tremec DCT as well. The Dark Horse should get the DCT out of the GT500 or the Tremec manual, which to me would really put that car up on the pedestal that Ford wants it to be on for a real, real high performance car. And again, I know the A10 is capable, but out of the box, the DCT blows it out of the water. And in a car like the Dark Horse, I think that's a transmission it should probably have. So does this car live up to the legacy of the Mustang? In my opinion, I think it does. It's rear wheel drive, it's V8, manual transmission's available. A lot of manufacturers have gone away from that. Ford is not only giving it to us, they're supporting it and they're celebrating it, which is great. So to me, I think the Dark Horse is gonna be a great car. I think it's gonna live up to the legacy, and I can't wait to drive one.